Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Hosea Lombard, known to history mostly as Captain H.C. Lombard, was a man of parts, as they used to say. He was at various times a fireman and had a long career as a lawman, also worked for Smith & Wesson at one point. And from 1859 to 1861, he set up a factory on the second floor of a building in Springfield, Massachusetts to manufacture these. Small vest pocket or perhaps parlor pistols chambered for the then cutting edge technology 22 Rimfire. And this is a wee beastie, so we're going to be looking at it on the tabletop. But before we do, I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon. All of this costs money, reloading components, ammunition, guns, and your contributions help more than you know. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors who've made donations of ammunition, tools, and all manner of things, not the least of which is guns for me to show to you and talk about. So let's go to the tabletop. So the pistols manufactured by H.C. Lombard were quite simple. They were similar to the Colt Butler Derringer and I think predated it. Um, you simply put it on the safety cock, press this button, swing the barrel aside, and you can throw a cartridge across the bench. Insert a cartridge, close it, cock it, and you're ready to fire. Uh, the frame, as you can see, is gunmetal, sort of brass or bronze alloy, and uh, it has a full frame grip with rosewood grip panels that are in very, very good condition, and uh, lightly engraved, which was somewhat unusual. Most of the guns were not. On the top of the barrel is the maker's name, and the barrel is... Uh, three and a half inches long. Um, there is no ejector or extractor of any kind. The top of the breech is slightly curved to allow it to swing into position, which gives you clearance on the rim of the cartridge to remove the cartridge, flick it out with a fingernail or what have you. And as you saw in the video, I had no difficulty doing so um, after they had been fired. You'll notice this gap at the breech because the pressed copper cartridges of the time were somewhat unreliable and subject to rupturing. And this would vent that if that unhappy event occurred or theoretically allow you to see if the gun is loaded without actually opening it. The front sight is a very, very thin part round blade. The rear sight is this minute groove on the top of the hammer. So the sight picture is, um, let's go with suboptimal. Despite that, you can achieve surprising accuracy at five to seven yards with this, but you have to be on your game to do so. Uh, the barrel rotates either direction. So first ambidextrous gun, maybe. <laughs> and uh, it's very nicely made and finished. It is properly rifled. I don't know if we can get a view of that. And overall, it's in remarkably good condition. Uh, the case is not original to the gun, but it is original to me having the gun. And um, keeps it quite nicely, so that's all to the good. Anyway, pistols like this would have been carried in a pocket or perhaps used for casual target shooting in a parlor of, of an evening. And um, the barrel is almost certainly simply wrought iron. Now, the cartridges that I fire out of it are CCI 22 CB shorts, which fire a quite lightweight bullet over a very, very modest charge. And um, like the original black powder load, which was of the same dimensions, um, these make about 700 feet per second. And technically, this is lethal. You could put a round through someone's skull and kill them. But it's a fairly dubious proposition. As you can see, there is a stout screw here that the barrel pivots on. 
And this is a simple tilting lever that engages this slot in the bottom, as you can see here. And it locks up quite as robustly as it needs to. And again, it's, um, it's a lovely, elegant little thing. And uh, I like it quite a bit. I will make a note about what we call 22 short. At the time it was called 22 rimfire and it was the only 22 caliber cartridge there was basically. Six millimeter Flaubert was 22 caliber, but they were a, a primer propelled cartridge that was considerably shorter and fired either a round ball or a very, very lightweight conical bullet. Jose Lombard, as I mentioned, had a fairly diverse career, and he ended his life in, if I recall correctly, 1891, after a long and successful career as a lawman. Uh, he never went back to firearms manufacture, properly speaking. He did work briefly for Smith & Wesson, I believe after the Civil War. Um, but mostly he just moved on to other things after his factory burned down. How I came to be in possession of this is a whole nother story. A collector friend of mine came across it and knew that I would have a particular interest in it and very kindly sent it to me for Christmas. Thank you very much, CB. Um, and the reason he knew I would have an interest is that H.C. Lombard married a cousin of his landlady and that makes him my several times great uncle. So there's a family connection apparently making small single shot pistols runs in the family. <laughs> anyway, it's very cool. And yes, I, I know it's 160 years old, but I do shoot it. Steel does not magically weaken from sitting around for long periods of time unless it rusts, which this is not. Anyway, it's a neat little gun, a great touchstone to my personal history, and I uh, just really, really like it, and I enjoy shooting it. If you like the video as much as I like this gun, um, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Hit like even if you don't subscribe. Um, it helps YouTube know that they should show videos to people. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.